It's Dr. Devgan, your cataract coach, with a white cataract, but look at the color. It's white, but more on the slightly yellow or brown scale. That's important. I'll tell you why. We'll instill some tripan blue dye in the eye. That's to stain the anterior lens capsule. We'll now dilute the dye with anesthetic. That gives us a better view. And now, of course, fill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. We're going to use just a dispersive viscoelastic here to fill the AC and protect the corneal endothelium. Important as you inject this to try to get the blue dye out in an exchange like we did here. That looks great. Now, before you make the main incision, let's make sure this is not intumescent. Let's make sure there's not fluid in there. When I put the viscoelastic, I put the eye pressure high. So the IOP now is probably 40. That's pretty tense. 40, maybe even more millimeters of mercury. A little more viscoelastic even. Check the pressure now. Nice and firm. We'll use a cystotome. I don't normally use this, but I want to keep the AC pressure high. I want the antechamber pressure higher than the intralenticular bag pressure. We'll start opening a rexus there. And no fluid came out. So this doesn't appear to be a milky cataract. So now let's go ahead and continue with the normal surgery. Main incision being made with a diamond keratome. If this was an intumescent cataract, we may have expressed some fluid out of it. We'll start our rexus here, and you'll notice there's not going to be any fluid or milk coming out of the lens. So this is the nature of these yellowish or slightly brown tinted cataracts. Yes, they're white cataracts, but it's mostly nuclear density and very little of it is liquefied cortex. So there's our rexus. Be careful in hydro dissection because you can't directly see the fluid wave. So I do a very tiny amount, a little bit at a time. And as soon as I can rotate the nucleus like that, I'm pretty much done. So we don't want to do a lot of hydro dissection because you can't directly visualize it. More viscoelastic to recoat the endothelium and we'll get our phaco probe. Keep in mind, my surgical view is, of course, a little bit bigger than your view, so this doesn't go out of my view on my oculars. Here's the chopper and the phaco probe, buzz in, high vacuum, hold the nucleus, and we try to crack it, and that's pretty good. I'm gonna buzz in again and chop again. There we go, I think we got a quarter free. Now this is a leathery type of cataract where the material's stuck to itself hard to separate these quadrants even with those chops we'll just take our time buzz in again and chop chop and more chop so into the little quadrant here as well try to bring it up not quite getting it it's a little bit attached still so let's try separate these pieces more let's rotate the nucleus there's a big piece let's see if we can get this one out and you see down there deep in that crack it's kind of attached that helped separate it. So now we're taking our time. We use phaco power modulations, minimize the energy in the eye. You remember we recoated the endothelium with viscoelastic with a dispersive. And we're also operating lower at the iris plane. We don't want to ride the corneal endothelium. So try to stay back away from that. This cataract is best approached a little bit at a time. Take out small pieces, buzz in, chop another small piece, and just continue. No need to worry about speed here. We should take our time and be very careful. Remember, because there is very little cortex in these white cataracts, there may not be much uh, lens material weighing down the caps or bag. So as we remove these last pieces of nucleus, you could have the caps or bag coming forwards. But we'll just take our time here. And again, we're only applying phaco energy uh, judiciously, only when the nuclear piece is right at the tip. Half the nucleus out, here's the other half, let's see if we can get the chopper around it, and that's a pretty good chop, and no, it's still kind of stuck together. Again, nature of these types of cataracts. A little more buzz of energy here, and now the chopper's gone into a safe position to protect the posterior capsule. There it is, see that? The smooth end of the chopper is towards the capsule. We'll take these pieces out, They'll come to the tip. The pieces come to the tip based on the fluidic settings in the eye. Don't chase the pieces. Let them come to you. 
If there's some epi nucleus, let's just do it with the IA probe. It's safer. So we'll switch over to the IA probe. A little bit of patient movement here. I think the patient's surprised that she can finally see some light. And so there's that epinuclear shell. We can just take it down with the IA probe. A tiny little nuclear chip. We got rid of that too. If it gets stuck at the tip, you can just use the second instrument or chopper to push it in the port, just like that. And you note there's not a lot of cortex here. The red reflex is a little bit poor in this patient. Um, she has underlying diabetic disease, a very dark pigmented fundus, as well as prior PRP, panretinal photocoagulation for the retinopathy. Here comes our lens, a single piece acrylic lens. We're gonna put this right in the capsule bag and we'll deliver that lens and we'll unfold it carefully, making sure that the entire lens, both haptics as well as the optic, go completely within the capture bag. Again, the patient's moving around a bit. She's just so surprised to be able to see light. This patient had uh, bilateral white cataracts and really hadn't seen much in a couple of years. So there's the lens in pretty good position. I'm happy with that. And the eye probe to remove viscoelastic. I like to go behind the eye well to remove viscoelastic as well. Important on the cortex removal, you have a more conservative setting. And on the viscoelastic removal, a much higher flow. I want fluid to flow through here and wash out any viscoelastic, any cataract pieces. We see the rex is overlapping the optic very nicely. That looks great. Cleaning out the rest of the anterior segment. So this is an interesting case. White cataract. And it was on the yellowish brownish side of the spectrum, the color spectrum. So we did not get any milk or lens fluid coming from the lens capsule. So we'll seal up the incisions and we'll call it a day. And this patient was absolutely thrilled and it's such a pleasure to operate on people who have such terrible cataracts.